Welcome back to the show. We're now joined by Tom Malone to talk a bit of racing. How are you, Tom? Good, yeah. Good, yeah, Tony. All good? Yeah, it's been uh, an interesting day. I say you were down and out and about in Joseph's this morning, were you? It was um, an absolutely beautiful morning in Owning, um, kind of near the typical Kenny Watford border, sort of near three borders. Um, a kind of a special morning, really. We were there as journalists and a few uh, jockeys as well, ex jockeys, because the Pat Smullen Champions Race for Cancer Trials Ireland at the Curra happens on Sunday week. That's Sunday, the 17th, uh, Sunday, September 15th, rather. And this is a fundraising race for um, cancer research and for trials. And earlier on today, I spoke to Charlie Swan. There were four uh, former jockeys there Charlie Swan, Paul Carberry, uh, Ruby Walsh, and we also had. Who am I leaving out? Joseph? Joseph O'Brien. Um, who was the best of them, actually? Um, uh, Talent-wise, for me, it's always Carberry. I agree. Uh, but Carberry, Ruby, um, Charlie Swan, and then I think AP. I think AP's See, that, that no... Would have been, that would have been sacrilege to say that in Britain, Sir Tony <sighs> McCoy and all that, and uh, he was brilliant with his time today, but I agree with you. Yeah, um, I mean... You, you you tweeted something that was like, oh, here's AP McCoy, you know, giving instructions. I was like, he should be listening to those three non Yeah, he, he may not have been advising on how to be a jockey, but in any event, um, that was actually one of the first things I said to Charlie Swan uh, when I spoke to him earlier. So the four champions this morning, who was the best for them? <laughs> AP, Swan, McCoy, Jesus, or Carby or Ruby. Some standard of riders, though, to be fair, in this no, race. Jesus, they were all great. They were all brilliant. Um... No, I wouldn't be able to pick one of them. They were all, you know, they all had their own. They were all brilliant. At, at all, they, they, they were brilliant of all rounders, but they were, you, you know, they, like Paul for his coolness and weight and whatever, you know. Um, he liked to wait. Yeah. Yeah. And AP for his determination and, and Ruby for his, you know, his, his courage and his, you know, the way he used to present horses and fences and stuff. And, you know, they're all brilliant. Like, what know. about yourself in terms of which of the three were you most alike? I think I was lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Look, it's um, different times, I suppose. I've probably my best attitude was probably tactical wise, but you know, just so many different. They're all good riders. This mm. time, you know. It must be a bit. It must be a bit of nostalgia this morning being here and just around the the guys you used to ride with back in the day. Yeah, I think it's 2003 since I, I would have rode upsize them. So Jesus, yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe. Yeah, doesn't feel that long ago, but it's mm. amazing how long it, how long it is. Yeah, it's. I guess it's the best um, cast of riders in one race. Uh, it is. You know, it's brilliant. Like, you know, I mean, the minute I was asked, I, I said yes, yeah, especially for Pat. You know. Um, He's such a great guy and, you know, he's such a good rider too, but a really nice guy. And um, when they said there was going to be like nearly 10 champion jockeys, so all from Ireland, it's quite unusual, really. Yeah, it, it yeah. is. It's, it's very tough for the racing community, this, uh, because um, just how sudden it's, it's obviously happened and, you know, how, how difficult it has been for Pat and his family. That's right, you know, it's... It's terrible, and everybody, you know, everybody has somebody that they know that has had cancer and stuff, you know. So, you know, so it is a for everybody to take part. You know, it's a, it's a big thing, really. You know. How would you describe him as a person for those who don't know him? Really, really nice, a real good guy. Like he was, you know, he'd, he'd always think of people, and you know, I remember being in the way room with him. He was always a real solid fella, you know. Um, and fun, fun guy too, you know, so it's, it's just, you know, so heartbreaking, but hopefully, you know, hopefully he recover from this. Yeah, it's it's the timing of him not being able to ride in the race, I thought was quite cruel as well, yeah, because obviously I, he was building up for it. That's right, I was at a wedding with him recently and he was in great form and he was really looking forward to it, you know. Mm. I think that's the, the big killer for him, you know, he was really looking forward to riding in it, you know. But, um, such is life. Such is life, hope, mm. hopefully he... He, you know, he'd pull through. So yeah, and um, the race itself, it obviously it will actually quite matter to you who wins. I, I get that feeling anyway. Look, I think we're all pretty competitive under it all. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not too worried who, who wins really, but obviously it'd be nice to have a good ride and you, you know you run well in it. But um, it's all for a good course. But obviously it would be nice to win. <laughs> nice to ride the car as well, you know. Yeah, that's right. I haven't ridden the car yeah. for, for a while, so. 
You know, it's good. I think the last winner I rode there was there was a, a flat, a national hunt jockey's race against a flat jockey's race. And I rode a winner for Tony Mullins. So, yeah, I think that was the last time I rode a winner there. What have you been up to since your training career as well? How have you found that readjustment to um, another role in racing, I suppose? Yeah, it's, look, it's, uh, you know, it's been great that I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bit for JP, mm. buying horses in France. Um, the training is really hard, you know, it's, just, it's a hard life. Um, so, did you regret going into it or did you... No, I've always, I, I always wanted to do it. I'm glad I did do it, you know. Mm. You know, I really did enjoy the training, but it is a hard life and... It, Unless you're you're at, have over fifty ho- horses, well, this is what my accountant kept saying. It unless you're over fifty horses, you're you're not making any money, you know. Yeah. So at the same time, when you have a family, you know, you want to provide for them. So that's the reason I got out, you know, because I wasn't making money. Mm. But it, it's hard because you love the game and you nearly do it for nothing. But yeah, at the a end lot of people day, are. They are. A yeah. lot of people are doing it for nothing. Mm. At the end of the day, I thought it was more important things than. You know, than struggling all your life. So, were you are you happier since you left? Or oh, oh yeah, yeah. You know, definitely yeah. less of the stress. Yeah, you know, less of the stress and and um, you know, you can do. You know, I'm doing things with the kids at weekends and things that before I wasn't able to do. Mm. You know, so. Thanks a million. Top man, and racing on Off the Ball is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie or follow the new Twitter account at HRI Racing, hashtag every racing moment. And uh, racing and off the ball has been full of profit of late. Yeah, other, well, other than the week you came in, <laughs> yeah, probably the week I came in. Yeah, yeah no, tip the tip the wrong uh, the wrong Aga Khan horse. But you talk about money in racing. You just hear Charlie Swan, a man who would have had a wonderful career as a jockey, plenty of um, you know, plenty of contacts, plenty of good owners, and just the struggle and the grind of training and how difficult it is. It's a, it's a, interesting to see so many of these legends. How few of them have actually gone gone on to training, bar obviously you know Joseph and Johnny Muerta. Joseph went training because he couldn't ride anymore. He was he was too um, heavy. Now, so you look at the four jockeys that were there today. Um, none of them is training. I don't really think any of them actually no, has, I that, mean, has an ambition at the yeah, moment. No, um, Paul Carberry breaks a few, and he breaks a few pointers and broke a few hearts away. in the day. He did. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's not get into Archibald. But like, I mean, Joseph O'Brien, right? In 2010, it was only nine years ago, Joseph was joint champion apprentice. And here he is, and he's now multiple Group 1 winning, Melbourne Cup winning, uh, Cheltenham Festival winning trainer. Like, it just when you look at Joseph as just like one of the, I would say, underappreciated talents, it's just phenomenal. In 2013, he broke a 20-year-old record for the most winners ever ridden in a season. That was by Mick Canan. You know, and you consider in 2013, he would have been at, just starting to come to the cusp with those weight struggles as well, where it's sub nine stone was just not an option. Mm. We have the frightening prospect of Dunica training, as well as his dad, Aidan, and his brother, uh, Joseph, probably from David Watchman's own old gallops, if things are to be um, believed. I believe that may happen sooner or later, as Dunica struggles with his weight as well. You will he's have even s- taller. Uh, he's even taller. You know, when we had Dunica on the um, Friday night racing there, not that long ago, he hadn't eaten since Thursday morning, and we recorded at 3 p.m. Yeah, he'd had a Friday. couple of jellies and a, like a glass of black tea or something. But again, you look at Tony McCoy now, and he looks like a human being now. I mean, you looked had at him when... a bit of a belly on him. Well, he looked, yeah, I was, he looked I comfortable. Didn't him, you didn't say it to no. him, no. No, I, I'd I think he mentioned that he was considerably the heaviest and might actually have to do something To be fair to Tony McCoy, if you've effectively starved yourself for 20, 25 years, I think you're entitled to eat properly. Just the 4,358 career winners. Mm. Like, phenomenal. I know, like we said at the top of the show, okay, he might be fourth of them, but like, Ruby would never drive to Hereford to ride four yaks at the potentially getting a couple of winners like. He There's just, a thin just line between it, like. sort of insanity and I suppose hunger for a winner. If you were watching that on um, our social channels, you will have noticed how utterly staggering this part of the world is. It's uh, obviously up on a hill and this morning it was beautiful. If you go there in winter... I don't think you even need to go there in winter to find them. Oh my God. Um, it, yeah. If you've been to the, the Carlisle Grounds on a winter's night to watch the League of Ireland or if yeah. you've been to Dundalk Racecourse or Navin Racecourse in winter, yeah. you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, it's cold, but it was 
so beautiful this morning. You've obviously been there yourself. Yeah, it's that. It's such a wonderful uh, way to work horses as well. Mm. This is a steady climb up the hill. How would you explain it's that to e- people? Because it's entirely different to how Aiden trains horses. Because yes. Aiden doesn't have that facility. Quite simply, Aiden. And just to remind you, Aiden's uh, God, Aiden's father-in-law, Joe Crowley, started training on this hill years and years ago, and then Aiden sort of refined that gallop, and now his son Joseph is there, who's obviously a grandson of Joe Crowley. Yeah, some trainers are absolute advocates for hill training because you would it works the horses back quite well it also takes a bit of weight load off their front legs too and it just gets them rolling up a hill and it's just really good for strengthening them up some trainers work in the flat martin pipe always worked his horses up a hill he had a short uphill gallop um you know the hill and screen is a pretty famous gallop in me that a lot of trainers would use um but, you know, some trainers do, some don't. But, look, it, it is obviously a way to get a harder bit of work into a horse without having to commit to more distance. It's like, it's like anything. You know, if you stick the old incline on the treadmill when you're mm. in the gym, I mean, you want your head checked. But, like, that's the way he works his, works his horses. Yeah, and just Joseph, the, granted he would, he would admit that he's been in a privileged position, that he's um, inherited a situation to an extent through his father and what his father achieved that would be the dream of, of virtually everyone else. Yeah, That absolutely. doesn't subtract from the fact that he's already achieved a hell of an amount and he's I mean, possibly there, becoming the, the biggest dual-purpose trainer in the world on the way to it, you, if not. You would have to think so. I mean, there. Th- like, there are lots of people in horse racing who have been given a leg up by their parents, but very few have reached even within an ass's roar of the heights that Joseph has. Because you're talking about, like, he was, st- he was training horses whilst continuing to be badly drawn. Man, not quite main jockeys. Ryan Moore had come in at that stage. You know, I mean, you had that kind of comical situation when Ivanovich Gorbachev won at Cheltenham. And, like, it was still in Aiden's name. But obviously Joseph was training them. And he was riding work in Bally Doyle in the morning, then going over and working his own horses in the afternoon. And he had this squad of, including Ivanovich Gorbachev, who went on, of course, to win a, win a triumph hurdle. And the kind of post-race interviews with Aiden were comical. Because, you know, yourself, you talk to Aiden post-race, and he can give you, like, insane depth and detail into a horse, into how their feet move, whether they're front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. He could barely pick this horse out of the parade. And he's like, yeah. you know. Um, so it, it, was, it was a rather comical situation. But it just goes to show, like, from then to now, it's just, it's just the most incredible cre- career trajectory. Like I say, 2010, he was a champion apprentice, and now he's, he's just he's a huge trainer. The reason we were there today, obviously, was for that charity race on Sunday week. It transpired, um, more or less as we were departing, that Ferdy Murphy, who was a native of County Wexford, he passed away in his um, home in France, age 70, after a long cancer battle. And anyone who had seen Ferdy over the last uh, few years could attest to, I suppose, his physical downfall. Um, Pat Smullen is fighting the biggest fight of his life at the moment. Um, I, there must I, have been an incredible poignancy there this morning. Yeah. I mean, this, this news only kind of broke just over a week ago, and then this press day was sort of following on from that. So it must be so incredibly raw. Obviously, he wasn't there. He wanted to be there, according to his wife, Frances, who was there. And there was, as you say, the poignancy of Frances also coming back to her home where her father trained for reasons that kind of were obviously out of her control, that she didn't... Um, I guess want to have have to happen, but as as life goes, um, I I think what was crippling about Pat Smullen was he was uh, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in March of last year, um, which was an incredibly low um, survival rate. Unfortunately, there the the severe fact of it, but he'd come through very very well his treatment and. As Charlie uh, said, he he was all looking forward to riding in this race, getting back in the saddle, and um, I don't think. I don't think you can really, words are, are, are any use to describe how cruel it is that that was taken away from him. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, it's just a charity race, let's not, but like, and the, in the grander scheme of things that the man gets better, it's, but like, like you said, it's just this, like, it's almost petty cruelty of illness, isn't it? Like, he just, everything gets taken, away, all the joy and goodness is just gone from his life that, look, it's a, an horrific illness. But like, this was one good thing he had to look forward to, and then, you know, it comes back and, and that's everything's whipped out from underneath him. He can't he can't even probably leave the house or whatever, but he's obviously, you know, the the impact of chemotherapy on your on your immune system is terrible. So, you know, you are pretty much so many cancer patients aren't pretty much housebound. There's a strange, I suppose, um, positive to all of this in that uh, so many people have spoken about, you know, cancer and also the fight to fund research into it. But also, I suspect that the Curra, which has had a fairly turbulent year itself in terms of redevelopment, I think it's going to have a bumper crowd on Sunday because 
anyone who will have any interest in racing or any, any human level interest will want to be there, not only because of Pat, but also because you have... These other guys. I mean, uh, you have the like, thing is as well about Ruby, right? Ruby's retirement was just pff, gone. Mm. You know what I mean? He literally stood up, waved at the crowd and said, and that's it, I'm not riding another horse. You know, it was that punch saying, it was on the cards, obviously, but, you know, whereas A.B. McCoy got a bit of a farewell tour. Um, but, like, race fans, if you weren't there at punch saying this year, for whatever reason, you will have missed Ruby and you're never going to see him ride another horse again until this race will come. Uh, in addition to Ruby, we have A.P. McCoy, Paul Carberry, Charlie Swan, Johnny Mertz, Richard Hughes, Kieran Fallon. By the way, that's, Ted that's the one I'm... Insane. And I'm most looking forward to Kieran Fallon, if I'm honest. Without, um, yeah, what, what about his son? We'll and get his to that son again. is phenomenal. Um, so, yeah. But like, without being overly uh, proud of being Irish, the standard of jockey there. So there is one thing about Pat Smullen not riding. I think they might have given him something of a solo in this race, and Pat Smullen from the front was always virtually impossible yeah. to catch. And so yeah, it might absolutely. make it a little bit more competitive that the great man isn't there. Yeah, I would think so. And you imagine there's going to be a massive uh, competition amongst the trainers as well to have this this little bit of uh, you know one-upmanship amongst each other. But um, it's definitely uh, stoked some some competitive fires because Paul Carberry, I actually have his equisizer at the moment, and uh, I got a call. I got a call. It's a it's like a mechanical horse you use to get your uh, fitness up mm. if, for race riding. So um, I got a I got a text there to say he wants it back. So <laughs> it's obviously uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, the kids love it. Screw uh, you, Carberry. Yeah, You're not so uh, so it's obviously uh, ignited some competitive fires there that he wants the exercise back that they're going to turn up race fit uh, for this. But, yeah, absolutely. You know, Tony McCoy, Ruby Walsh, Charlie Swan. I mean, it's a... I cannot wait to see Kieran Fallon back in the saddle. Johnny Murta back too. He'll surely have one. He won the charity race last week in Cork as well. But actually, that was great to see Paddy Woods. who must have ridden was. almost every charity race there's been in this country for the last five years. So good to see him get a winner as well. Tom Bugsy Malone, it's been great to have you on. I do agree with you with regard to the most naturally talented jumps jockey of, of those. But Murta Hughes or Fallon? For me, oh, it's, a, it's a tie between Richard Hughes and Kieran Fallon. I'm going to go narrowly, narrowly for Richard Hughes, despite the greatness of uh, the others. Racing on Off the Ball is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie or follow the new Twitter account at HRI Racing, hashtag every racing moment. And if you are around on Sunday week, there's really only one place to be. We're going to talk boxing next.